what it is, what it do, cyber world, it is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, ashsaidit.com, ashsaidit.com. Welcome back to the Ash Said It Daily Podcast Show. We appreciate you guys. All your love, all your support makes a huge, huge difference. Yes, we're on the brink of half a million streams worldwide. Would not be possible without your love, without your support. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Today, I am joined by registered dietitian and yoga instructor, the beautiful Miss Nicole Dandria. Hey, Nicole. Hi, Ash. Thanks for having me on. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. All right. So, Nicole, let us know, where are you from? Where do you represent? I am originally from outside of Philadelphia in South Jersey and been in Atlanta for the past four and a half years, but total mm. in Atlanta is actually my third time in Atlanta, so total in Atlanta, um, working on 10 years. <laughs> oh, wow. So you just kept coming back. Atlanta was pulling you. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's pulling me. Exactly. I think it's pulling me back here. It's my place. Yes, definitely. All right, Nicole. Where did Nico Bella Organics come from? So I started playing with chocolate in my kitchen. I was working full-time as a dietitian. I have been, a di- I'm going to date myself here, but about 23 years I've been a dietitian, and uh, now everybody can probably guess my age. Um, but we have been mostly in a clinical setting before I started the chocolate company, and I loved it, working with premature babies, but I really needed a creative outlet. And my lifestyle was full of whole foods, plant-based foods, lots of rainbow colors, and I just wanted to be able to articulate my passion for eating whole plant-based foods and inspire people to eat more of them um, in a different way than through the clinical setting or in a hospital. Mm -hmm. So I started playing with chocolate on the side, and um, I loved dark chocolate, and when it started getting all of the health benefits, um, you know, kind of promoted in the media, and all of the research research started to come out to back the health benefits of dark chocolate. I thought it would be a great time to add even healthier um, foods to the dark chocolate. I shouldn't say even healthier because dark chocolate is one of the healthiest, but um, just add healthy superfood ingredients to dark chocolate that was already getting a lot of reported health benefits. So I started making chocolate with blueberries and pumpkin seeds, um, walnuts, so anything that was healthy, I would add it to chocolate. Um, and I made it in my kitchen to start and brought it to a local farmer's market, and it was selling well, and that's kind of how it started. So I really didn't intend for it to be a business, but when I was in, at the time, well, I was in Philadelphia at the time, um, making it on the side, bringing it to farmer's markets, and I was like, well, maybe we have a thing here. And at the time, there wasn't a lot of, there was, only one uh, plant-based or vegan company that was making chocolate truffles. They had the Creamy Center. Um, so I was making them using, um, at the time it was a soy milk, so that really was the option in 2007. We didn't have all the plant-based milk that we have now. Mm-hmm. Um, but I was using a soy milk to make them creamy and um, some coconut oil and then adding blueberries and walnuts and pumpkin to the inside for the flavoring. And, uh, yeah, they started taking off, so I just started to think, well, maybe I can make this into a business. And uh, the name is my late dog, Isabella, and that's my name. So Isabella comes from the pole and Isabella. (laughs) Awesome. And when did you realize that things were starting to really be bigger than this, you know, this hobby idea that you had for Nicabella? Well, th- things have really um, changed so much initially when I launched the company in 2009. Um, it wasn't really officially launched in 2007. I was still, you know, it was still very much a hobby. I launched it in 2009 officially. Um, at that time, I actually moved to California, so I left in California thinking that was a very, you know, like the health mecca, and it would be well, very well received there. So that's where it was launched, and... It did really well. There wasn't, it was really all about the timing. There wasn't, as I mentioned, um, a, there weren't a lot of other brands doing that type of thing at the time. Now there's lots. There's lots of mm-hmm. um, fair trade chocolate and origin chocolate and vegan chocolate. And you've got you, raw chocolate. You've got so many varieties. And they're all really amazing. I mean, I enjoy trying the different varieties as much as I enjoy eating my own. But um, <laughs> at that time, there just wasn't a lot. So, it did really well online, and then after about two years, the online space changed, and SEO was changing 
drinking a lot and I was fit to get lost and um, it was just an online business to start um, but once more companies started to evolve doing similar chocolates making similar chocolates and then also the online space changed um, we kind of had to restructure our business plan um, mm-hmm. so now we, we focus more on we, we actually started manufacturing more shelf stable the chocolates have a shorter shelf life so they're really an online product we sell directly to the consumer but we started to con- uh, manufacture more um, shelf stable products that had a six month or more shelf life and that's something that could be sold in stores and we shifted our business model to more of like a wholesale retail product um, mostly most of our products were wholesale and retail um, so yeah so it's been like um, a lot of, I think, you know, you have to loosely write a business plan and then evolve with the changes and revisit it often to see how you need to change it and move with consumer demand and, you know, what's happening in, in our case with the online space and the retail setting and where where it's really going to work. And it doesn't always work initially. I started thinking that I was going to sell to spas and hotels and um, that really wasn't that really wasn't ideal for spots like our chocolates just didn't work in that setting and I really went in thinking that it would and you know we did some I did a little bit of initial research asking you know saying hey would you um would healthy whole food truffles be something that you'd want to offer to your clients after a facial after a massage or could you sell them in your store and there were a lot of folks that were excited but because of the short shelf life and um, just because that's not a setting where people shop for food, um, it didn't work. So that's kind of where I really focused on the online, and then we shifted to the retail market. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, you guys, so we're going to take a brief break. When we come back, we're going to talk to Nicole a little bit about some of those obstacles. As many of us, you know, every great idea has a, a great starting point, but we run into some roadblocks. We're going to talk with her briefly on that. Wouldn't it be great if there was a place to discover awesome discounts on gently used clothes? There is. Swap.com, the world's largest online consignment and thrift store. Over 14 million tons of textiles are wasted each year. Shopping secondhand, Swap.com helps prevent textile waste from polluting the environment. With Swap.com, you can save up to 90% off retail price of your favorite brands like Lululemon, Carter's, Nike, J. Crew, and Gap. Between six to 10,000 new items are added daily. If something doesn't fit, enjoy hassle-free returns within 30 days, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Shop Swap.com and use the promo code ASHDAILY40 for your 40% off today. Welcome back to the Ash Did It Daily podcast show. I'm your girl, Ash Brown, and we're talking to registered dietitian and yoga instructor and Miss CEO herself of Nicobella Organics, the beautiful Nicole Dandrea. <laughs> All right. So, Nicole... As you're building this amazing brand, one that would stand all its own and different from the rest, what were some of your big challenges that you faced? Mm-hmm. Um, there have been many, and all of them has been, each one of them has been a, a learning process. So you know, I feel like you run into brick balls and, and you just kind of figure out another route and see what works, mm-hmm. and then it's all a good education. Um, I think, as I just recently mentioned, you know, some of it was just going from being, you know, one of two vegan chocolate companies and now there are a lot. So it's kind of finding a way to find your niche. And Mm -hmm. what I've learned is, uh, you know, keeping an eye on the competition is really a healthy thing. And as I've mentioned, I'd love to try other chocolates as well. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, indulge in them and and love supporting other small companies and um, or even the larger companies to see what they're doing. You know, a lot of these larger companies are really on to the plant-based lifestyle right now, so it's Mm -hmm. really cool to see this evolving um, through the larger brands. And it's really important overall, I think, is to stay true to yourself, that you're going to have competition no matter what. And I think as long as you stay true to yourself and your overall mission and you put your own personality into the brand. That's kind of what attracts your tribe. 
and makes you stand out from the rest. Because we're all going to have something unique about us, and um, I think it's just really great to find those unique qualities within each brand. So it's a stumbling block, but it's also a positive thing, so I think it helps you to, like, dive a little bit deeper into yourself and into your brand and to see what really truly sticks. Um, and then, of course, just business just business in general, my goal with starting the Gabella was to create a platform where I could educate people and inspire people to eat more plant-based foods and, and just live a holistic, healthy lifestyle. And when you are making a packaging chocolate from morning to night, you don't really get the opportunity to mm. educate. So it's been a process to find of other companies to help us with that process. So right now, you know, we have our recipes, and sometimes we dive in there to make the chocolate ourselves, but we have a local Atlanta chocolate company here who um, helps us make the product. They make it for us. They package it. So it's get, getting just reliable sources and people who are have the same ethical values as us who um, source fair trade chocolate and have organic practices and, and that sort of thing is a challenge, but once you find that fit, really wonderful and then it you know what it's done for me is allowed me to focus more on blogging or social media and opportunities to um educate people which was the reason why I wanted to start in the first place yes now what would you say is your best selling product today well this time of year the truffles um they're kind of like my baby, and that's what I started <laughs> with initially. And this time of year, they definitely sell best. Um, they're, they make cute little gift boxes, and we have different flavors. They're mm-hmm. unique flavors, so I think people just have a fun time indulging in the unique flavors. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like lime basil or the cinnamon turmeric, cayenne turmeric is a really big, you know, huge in the healing arena right now. Mm-hmm. So people really grasp onto that turmeric truffle. Um, my husband works with me as of the past two years. My husband has um, started working with me full time in the business, and he has created um, a line of Power Bites, which are nuts and seeds snacks, mm. and they are doing really well. There's a chocolate chip Power Bite that's like a healthy version of a chocolate chip cookie, and they're in um, several of the grocery markets around town, and Earth Fair, and Whole Foods, and um, they do really, really well. And also mm. in like two bars. So I think it just depends on the time of year and in, in what type of setting it's sold. Um, but yeah, like the healthy power bites made with nuts and seeds do really well in the juice bars. And then we have like chocolate covered nuts that are great for everyday snacking. Um, and they do great in the, with the athlete community. So it's kind of like each product has its own little fit. Gotcha. Gotcha. And what events can people look forward to seeing Nico Bello Organics at? Well, we typically try to attend Veg Fest in the Southeast region. Um, so there's the Atlanta Veg Fest, which is one of our favorites of, of the year. Um, it's a great place to attend seminars and workshops if you are uh, vegan or veg curious or you just want to attend and get lots of yummy foods. <laughs> but based. Um, that's a really fun event that happens in November. Uh, we'll also be at National Veg Fest, which is in April, and we'll be doing our first trade show, which we haven't done yet, and that is Expo East. It's a natural food um, expo, and that'll be in Baltimore, so that's actually a trade show, and um, that is coming up in September. Mm-hmm. So, And there may be in the works an aphrodisiac class with chocolates and essential oils coming up in February mm-hmm. that we are quickly trying to put together, so people can keep an eye out for that. Uh, we'll be posting details in the next couple of weeks. That sounds yummy. I, I definitely have to, you know, make sure that I'm getting all those notifications because <laughs> that yeah, sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you want to, um, I mean, social media is a great place to follow anything that we're doing and where we'll be. We do local farmers markets, so we'll post more doing farmers markets. If you're in the Atlanta area, you're outside of Atlanta. Uh, we do. Um, we ship everywhere. But as far as events. Um, We'll post those as well on social media and then also to our newsletter, which you can sign up online. Okay. Cool, cool. Yes. And with your experience under your belt and now your, your newfound experience with turning your passion into a paycheck, what advice would you offer to any person that may be looking to starting a health brand 
um, uh, maybe not necessarily chocolate, but something health conscious for this new audience? That's a great question. I think doing initial research is really important just to see what's out there, um, what consumers are currently looking for. There's some great websites, like all natural food websites that you can go to that are um, that do a lot of like they'll, they'll analyze trends in the food industry. Mm-hmm. Um, like Expo West and Expo East are two sites they have resources where you can see what's trending in the food industry and see what you know is going to be up and coming in the next year and seeing what what is already out there what's mm-hmm. working like what do you notice is, is moving on the shelves and what are people asking for and um, like I mentioned there's competition but if you have your own personality and your own brand you know, personality within your brand you can do something similar and um, as long as the, the, that arena is not super saturated with product I think that there's room for two to three products in you know one space um, and then also just making sure you kind of look at the um, all the elements that are involved with making the product. So, you know, do you, what, what do you want long-term? Do you want to be small? Do you want to be nationwide? And with that, you could do those cottage food licenses that are, that are available. Some states, so if you're small and you're bringing in, you know, under a certain dollar amount per year, you can work out of your home and get certified by the health department just staying small and local. Or if you want to be nationwide, then maybe, you know, do you want your own kitchen space? If you do, you need to look into the upfront cost for that. Or you can, what they call Copac, um, which is what we do, is you create the product and then you find a manufacturer that can make it for you and package it for you. Um, and they may even distribute. And um, that might be an option. And that was my personal option just because I wanted to be free to do the nutrition component and um, and educate people versus being, you know, have it running a kitchen space. So mm. just kind of, I think, deciding how big you want to be or how small you want to be or, you know, keeping it more intimate and then what you want long term and when where, where you see yourself, say, in five years and what it's going to take to get there. Gotcha, gotcha. Nicole, thank you so much for joining us today. You had some really awesome insight from your your perspective of the industry, so we really appreciate you, and uh, we thank you for that. Thank you. I should really appreciate you reaching out, and yeah, if anybody wants to check out the site, it's nicobelloorganics.com, and, um, or you can email me, Nicole, N-I-C-H-O-L-E, at nicobelloorganics.com, and I'm happy to answer any questions. But thanks so much for the opportunity, Ash. No problem. And thank you guys for downloading the show on a regular basis. It means the world to me. 2018 is going to be bananas. It's going to be absolutely out of this world. But keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. That's what we're doing this for. We're doing this for the history books. Social media is nice. It's cool. It's fun. But real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys.